everybody for coming today. I'm taking it down. To celebrate Mike's life with us, I'd like to thank Guy for letting us use his property and Chuck for bringing all the food. Everybody that brought food, I thank you very much. I thank you for your support. And uh, my mom wanted me to open this with a prayer that I wrote back about 11 years ago. It was as a poem. It's a Abenaki prayer. And it's fitting because some of Mike's lineage is Abenaki Indian. We've got a little bit of English in us, a little bit of Jew, and I don't know what else. <laughs> but, but we embrace the Indian side. And you know, our family's been up in this area, the stone side has for hundreds and hundreds of years. And we're as much a part of this land as the land is a part of us. And so I'm going to open with this prayer. Great spirit of all that is, I ask you this day for the instincts of salmon to find my way home, the eyes of owls to see through the darkness in my life, the craftiness of coyote to help me stay alive, the ears of deer to hear all that you say, the patience of spider to wait for what will come, the thunder of buffalo to be heard above the storm, the playfulness of otter to keep me young at heart, the shell of turtle to keep me from harm, the strength of bear to overcome my enemies, the wings of eagle to soar above the clouds, the speed of falcon to pursue my prey, the gentleness of fawns so I may be kind to others, the endurance of wolves to keep going to the end, the most of all this day, I ask to be one with you when my time here is through. I've been thinking a lot about my brother lately and about my family and friends and how he's impacted different people's lives. I started out knowing my brother as we were kids. We're just wild and crazy. We loved to hunt and trap and fish. We liked to party when we were younger and chase women. Mike likes to chase women to buy real good. We all, we all go our separate ways through our lives and we come together maybe 10 years later, 20 years later. And people say, well, if you don't come around and visit, then you didn't really like the person. That has nothing to do with it. It has the fact that everybody lives their life and they have to go on and do their own things and to meet other people. And Mike has always made an impact on people. Everybody has always liked him that I know of. There's been a few people that haven't, but that's okay. There's a few people he didn't like, but he just said, hey, don't have him come around here. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, to attain godliness with contentment is great gain. And the, uh, on the way up from Florida, when I was driving, I was thinking about Mike's life, and a lot of times I thought he was just lazy and didn't want to work. And it hit me on the way that Mike was content. He was content with his life. He didn't need to go out and have brand new vehicles or new houses. He didn't want to achieve fame or fortune. He just wanted to be in the bar, to drink his few beers, smoke his cigarettes, go hunting once in a while, and to talk with his friends. That's what his life was about. My Uncle Sam, the only ones left on my dad's side, they're all gone. And he probably feels the same about the bar, he's a part of it, truly. And as long as his kids live and their kids live, there'll always be a piece of the bar in everybody. Uh, this, I think the bar can be a hard place to live in. It takes a tough person to live up here. A lot of people like to come on the weekends, but to live here around, it's tough, but it's beautiful. And Mike's always going to be remembered for his later years where he was sitting on a McMahon Road on a four-wheeler or in a vehicle all day long just sitting there. And I know a lot of people that have come up and they've been depressed and they've been fighting with their girlfriends and they would sit there and have a beer with Mike and talk with him. And he would be like a counselor to one. I know that when his friend Bob Tate died, oh my God, that's been about 10 years ago, he lost a lot of his interest in life. He got really depressed. But he kept going on. And I, I remember that he was always bragging about his son Travis and how good he had done for himself. And in the last couple of years, his focus, he got to be with his daughter Kimberly through circumstances she didn't like to start with, but she had to go live with her dad. And it's been such a blessing to her, and it was a blessing to my brother Mike. He struggled and scraped and got up through college. He got to see her go off on her first job. And it was sad for her that... You got a choke to death? It was sad for her that her, die, her dad died on his, her first day at work. But she had attained something that he dreamed for. And his dreams were fulfilled. And he had adopted a new family in the last few years, the, the Greeks up the road. 
Jack and his wife and his father and his uncle, they, Mike had become a part of their family. Yes, he did. He really did. He had just started bonding with Guy and Aaron lately. He was up a week or so ago going through old pictures of his lifetime, showing him those things. It was almost like he knew he was getting ready to go. I don't have a whole lot more to say other than I miss him. He was my brother and my friend. And I'm sure he's going to be missed by a lot of people. I wrote something on Facebook before I came up to Florida, and I don't really remember how it went. It went something like, Brother Mike, you're gone in body, but your spirit lives on. As long as the breeze flows on the mountainside, the stream flows in the valley below, and the sound of a pull tab opening a can of beer can be heard as your friends gather around saying goodbye to Mountain Mike Stone, who has fallen down. And I just thank everybody for coming, and Travis wants to sing a song. Seven Spanish Angels, it's a Willie Nelson song. He wants to dedicate it to his dad, so if it all be quiet, just let it minister to us. And I forgot to mention his mom, who we checked on every morning to see if she was still alive. Mother, you're still alive in the window, 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty hard act to follow, Dave. Uh, you did a fantastic job. You did everything that I had hoped to uh, represent what my father was. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't thank you for more. It means a lot. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for showing up today. Uh, this is a celebration of, of the life of my father. I know whenever uh, I show a picture of him to uh, anybody, and they their eyes get really big, they say, oh my God, he's a massive man. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, well, that there is a man, he's the happiest man I have ever met. He wants for nothing, he needs nothing, and he has everything, as David did more eloquently put it than myself, but uh, my, my dad never got to see me play um, for a crowd. We played around the campfire several times. We had, uh, we always had fun and uh, my dad really liked this song <clears throat> and, I, and I hope I uh, do, uh, do it justice. So bear, bear with me, I just uh, started this week on this. Down and pick 